Attention or concentration is probably the most important essential in the development of mind culture. The possibilities of attention, when properly directed, are so startling that they would hardly appear credible to the uninitiated. The cultivation of attention is the distinguishing characteristic of every successful man or woman and is the very highest personal accomplishment which can be acquired. The power of attention can be more readily understood by comparing it with a magnifying glass in which the rays of sunlight are focused. They possess no particular strength as long as the glass is moved about and the rays directed from one place to another. But let the glass be held perfectly still and let the rays be focused on one spot for any length of time and the effect will become immediately apparent. So with the power of thought. Let power be dissipated by scattering the thought from one object to another, and no result is apparent. But focus this power through attention or concentration on any single purpose for any length of time, and nothing becomes impossible. A very simple remedy for a very complex situation, some will say. All right, try it. You who have had no experience in concentrating the thought on a definite purpose or object. So choose any single object and concentrate your attention on it for a definite purpose for even ten minutes. You cannot do it. The mind will wander a dozen times and it will be necessary to bring it back to the original purpose and each time the effect will have been lost and at the end of the ten minutes nothing will have been gained because you have not been able to hold your thought steadily to the purpose. However, it is through attention that you will finally be able to overcome obstacles of any kind that appear in your path onward and upward. And the only way to acquire this wonderful power is by practice. Practice makes perfect. In this as in anything else. In order to cultivate the power of attention, bring a photograph with you to the same seat in the same room in the same position as before. Examine it closely for at least ten minutes. Note the expression of the eyes, the form of the features, the clothing, the way the hair is arranged. In fact, note every detail shown on the photograph carefully. Now, Cover it and close your eyes and try to see it mentally. If you can see every detail perfectly and can form a good mental image of the photograph, you are to be congratulated. If not, repeat the process until you can. This step is simply for the purpose of preparing the soil. Next week, we'll be ready to sow the seed. It is by such exercises as these that you will finally be able to control your mental moods, your attitude, your consciousness. Great financiers are learning to withdraw from the multitude more and more, that they may have more time for planning, thinking, and generating the right mental moods. Successful businessmen are constantly demonstrating the fact that it pays to keep in touch with the thought of other successful businessmen. A single idea may be worth thousands of dollars, and these ideas can only come to those who are receptive, those who are prepared to receive them, those who are in a successful frame of mind. Men are learning to place themselves in harmony with the universal mind. They are learning the unity of all things. They are learning the basic methods and principles of thinking, and this is changing conditions and multiplying results. They are finding that circumstances and environment follow the trend of mental and spiritual progress. They find that growth follows knowledge, action follows inspiration, opportunity follows perception. Always the spiritual first, then the transformation into the infinite and illimitable possibilities of achievement. As the individual is but the channel for the differentiations of the universal, these possibilities are necessarily inexhaustible. 
Thought is the process by which we may absorb the spirit of power and hold the result in our inner consciousness until it becomes a part of our ordinary consciousness. The method of accomplishing this result by the persistent practice of a few fundamental principles as explained in this system is the master key which unlocks the storehouse of universal truth. The two great sources of human suffering at present are bodily disease and mental anxiety. These may be readily traced to the infringement of some natural law. This is no doubt owing to the fact that so far knowledge has largely remained partial. But the clouds of darkness which have accumulated through long ages are beginning to roll away, and with them many of the miseries that attend imperfect information.